In Silent 3, the colors of the sunset are realistic. It's more red than that, but that's... That mountain drama will continue to happen in the future. That's what I meant by that idea, or rather, it was like a seed at the beginning. So, that's a bit. This orange red alludes to the autumn season, in which the first sketches of Silent Hill 3 were made. This was back in the autumn of 2001, only a few days after the release of Silent Hill 2. Team was in the middle of the creative phase. Fortunately, the script written by the scriptwriter that wrote Silent Hill 2 was ready. The team was working a key Silent Hill component. Fear. First of all, what I wanted to portray in Silent Hill 2 was quiet terror. There is malice in people's hearts, or whatever you want to call it, emotional. I'm using something like that as a substitute. As for the fear I felt in the situation, it was a quiet, creeping fear. This decision guided each member of the team. Just as it was decided to impose that blood red color at the beginning of the game. The art director in charge of creating monsters used strong symbols to raise player. Anxiety. It's the same for the set. As usual, the set crew works on ways of producing a realistic effect. But this time they wanted to find a new idea that would take the game player. By surprise. This effect makes the sets come alive. Like these walls that bleed or burn. Or these floors. Swarm a concept that's apparently obvious and yet you've never seen it before. As it rose to these technical challenges, the Silence Hill team didn't forget that the most important thing is immerse the player in a credible world, even if that meant using pretty basic methods. If that strange looking map that you see in the background seems realistic, it's because. Five years old five. Luckily, when it comes to character design, the creators of Silent Hill don't have to turn to preschoolers. They can rely on the most talented of their artists.
For the first time, the KCET team chose to have a speech or a heroine. Heather, the young girl that above all they saw is innocent. The first sketches are evidence of this. One thinking about the characters, two young women were working with him and sometimes, there was a clash in feminine and masculine thinking. But not in the way you might imagine. Oh. Contrary to what you might have expected, these young women were the ones to insist on giving her some sex appeal in a very discreet way. It was the same for the cut of Heather's slightly curly hair. Her hairstyle was a result of discussions worthy of hair. Salon. How did you get here? It was Vincent, wasn't it? He led you here. When will he cease his meddling? When the team created Claudia, the basic idea was to make her look strange, but conventional. This subtle concept really put the creativity of the designers to the test. As a preliminary sketches, show. As you can see in these drawings, the clothes were originally far more sophisticated. Even Claudia's skin was more elaborate. There was a version and idea called skinhead. Inspiration struck while they were flipping through Fashion Magazine. When they saw this picture, they realized that because she had no eyebrows, they couldn't decipher her feelings, so they used this idea for Claudia's face. Although this detail is barely visible, it manages to evoke a subtle uneasy. Feeling you mock God. Traitor, you will go to hell. Lied to me about Heather Lady, the masculine characters in the game like Douglas. The detective who was based on the priest in the fifth element were also created to be like real human beings with their failings in complexes. As for Vincent, he's a hypocrite behind nice clothes and neat appearance. The animator wanted to make Vincent's hypocrisy emerge to the way he acts.
and so on and so forth for each character. The KCET team didn't set out to invent a video game hero, but a character that would be like a person from real life, vulnerable. I don't know what to say, that's why they use actors to play the characters in the game. And to choose the right actor, auditions are held, just like for a movie. Here's the actress who played Heather, still following me. Do I have to scream for help? Dad? Oh God, dead, wake up. No. No, no, this is the actress who was chosen. Actually, the heroine was named after her because her name is Heather. Heather Morris to be precise. Then comes the next step, the actors really play the game scenes for the motion capture. Which requires considerable physical and emotional involvement. But why, why? Of course, the actors also record the voices of the characters, once again. Was geared to emotional impact? No. No. No, no, like the music, for instance. Music, the definitive universal language of feeling. The man behind each melody and each sound in the Silent Hill series is Akira. He doesn't use direct inspiration or any references to familiar pieces of music. To compose, Akira allows the emotional content of the script to guide his fingers. For the first time in the Silent Hill series, Akira wanted to include songs with vocals. To find the voice, he flew to Los Angeles. He had fairly accurate idea of what he wanted. Now that you've gone, my supply fell through. Akira auditioned about 50 candidates and when he heard the timbre of this voice he completely fell under its charm. Addition to the music, Akira had to create new and particularly hair-raising sounds. For example, let's take this deep CA Venus voice, it was pure chance that he found it. Rather than being like B, it's more like that kind of musicality. This manner of discovery may seem strange, but the origin of the sound made by this monster is even stranger. Rhinoceros Rhinoceros is an animal based on rhinos. Change the pitch and do other effects like that with a computer. Monsters as varied and disturbing as ever. Straight out of the imagination of talented illustrator.
Each of the monsters in Silent Hill is there to disturb the player. Ito's secret is that he refuses to use elements that are too far removed from the human being. His monsters don't have horns or tentacles. Their weapons consist only of deformed human appendages. Here head that strikes. They're swollen heavy arms, but they arouse a feeling of disgust in the player. Ito also draws on the collective unconscious and the history of art. For instance, this abesse, monster. The first episode there are toilets everywhere. In the second the game begins in toilet and in the third the world seems to turn upside down as the player goes through the toilet. To figure out this metaphor in the story, you'll also have to make sense of the valve opening monster that you encounter at regular intervals throughout the game. Well, the faucet or the handle is something that opens and closes, or that lets water flow, or that stops coughing, etc. I think it was a way to do that, and there was a world called Silent Hill, with a front and a back. Always feel surrounded by void, always feel full of doubt, and doubt is what gives rise to fear. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday dear, oh, I forgot your name. The creators of Silent Hill had a central idea. Create hostile world permeated at all times by doubt. How you Heather, you show up everywhere, don't you? You make me sound like some kind of unwanted pest. Sident E.
A little bit later in the game you find yourself an unexpected and particularly disturbing scene. Told my tortured soul with your infinite mercy. Please forgive me. What are you supposed to do? There is no answer about that scene. Which is right and which is wrong? It may seem like a merciful person, but it is a positive reaction to their cycle. At that point, Heather had a god inside her. Heather was tormenting herself. I don't understand how to affirm god. Well, just say it. If you answer, well, I hate him because he's my enemy, and I don't believe in that god, so that's weird in itself. No, but if you answer, no, you are abandoning the person who is suffering. So I wanted the users to decide for themselves which one was correct. This is a question posed by policymakers. In the game were. Created like this. Like in this sequence, you never quite know what to expect. Good and evil are engaged in a never-ending battle. You will go to hell. I wish only for the salvation of mankind. The point is that now I really am on your side. Heather, go ahead and kill this crazy bitch. Heather, I need to speak with you, my. My name is Douglas Carden. I'm a detective. What are you doing? So nothing is ever black and white. Is that the end? Everything is always relative. I guess it's time to roll the credits, including you. Especially when you find out who you really are. I need a miracle and not so much charity now.